Okay, so let's continue to type 1 and type 2 errors. Suppose this is the null hypothesis and this is a one-sided test and we have the value of alpha is the blue region or the blue area and the radical. So as we have seen, the probability to commit type 1 error is alpha or the blue region. So, it is possible that the values under this curve really belongs to this curve. So, the value of alpha in fact represents the type 1 error which is rejecting the null hypothesis when the null hypothesis is true. So, we reject the null hypothesis which means the not lies here in the rejection area. But, when the null hypothesis is true which means the values here in this area of rejection really belongs to the original distribution so now suppose the null hypothesis is false and we have a different distribution for the mean or the mean value has changed into another value now we have the type 2 error which means to fail to reject the null hypothesis when null hypothesis is false so the null hypothesis is false means we have another distribution for the mean value. We will fail to reject the null hypothesis if we lie inside this area, which is the acceptance region. So inside this region, we have this red area where we are going to commit type 2 error because this area is the common area between the acceptance region in this distribution and the region which belongs to this distribution so type 2 error in fact is the probability under this distribution under the new mean value the new population or the new uh, value for the mean which is included in the same area of acceptance for the original or the null hypothesis so in fact the type 2 error or beta is usually difficult to compute directly so we need lot of calculation or we need lot of consideration we also have the term of power of test power of the test which is 1 minus beta in fact the power of the test is the probability to reject the null hypothesis when we should reject in fact we should have a good power of the test as large as possible so the power of the test is 1 minus beta now the best solution to decrease beta is to increase the sample size so if we increase the sample size we will reduce the probability of type 2 error or beta and we will increase the power of the test to do these calculations or to figure out how can we increase the sample size we are going to use what is called the operating characteristic curves or OCC so this is a sample for operating characteristic curve this is a special curve for different values of n for two-sided normal test so this is two-sided we have another curves for one-sided this is for normal test which means we know the variance of the test the population this is only for the level of significant alpha equal five percent so also we have different curves if alpha is one percent or nine percent or any other values so now we have in the x, uh, x axis the d and in the y axis we have the probability of accepting each node which is beta so what is d in fact d is the absolute value of difference between mu and mu naught divided by sigma so in fact this equation means how many sigmas is the real mean far from the hypothesized mean so mu is the real mean 
and the mu naught is the hypothesized mean. So this is the difference, and we calculate how many sigma is the difference. This is the D, and in the y-axis we have the probability to accept H naught when H naught is false, which is beta. So to illustrate these relations, we have an example. Suppose we have the hypothesized mean, the null hypothesis, mu equals 50. Suppose now we know that the true mean was mu equal 51. This is the true mean, but this is the hypothesized mean. Now, suppose we know the population standard deviation, sigma, to be 2. So the question is, we need to find the probability to commit type 2 error or beta if the sample size was 25. And we also need how much we should increase the sample size so that we get the power of the test as 90%. 90% for the power of the test means we have a type 2 error equals 0.1. So to solve this issue, we have the D or difference. We have the actual mean, which is 51. We have the hypothesized mean 50. We divide by the sigma. So D is 1 half. We have D 1 half, which is here. We know that the sample size is 25 so we are going to the curve of sample size 25 and the d equals 0.5 so this is the 0.5 for the d now this curve is for 20 or for sample size this curve is for 30 so our solution will be intersection somewhere in between for the sample size of 25 so in this point is our solution in the intersection so in the y-axis will be the value of beta so the value of beta is approximately in the middle between 0.2 and 0.4 so we have the value of beta or type 2 error to be approximately 0.3 so beta is 0.3 so we have the power of the test to be 70 percent so what does 70 percent mean 70 percent mean that we are sure that 70% we will reject the null when we uh, when the null hypothesis is false. So the other question now, by how much we should increase the sample size to get the beta equal 0.1. So now we need to get the power of the test to be 90% or beta equals 0.1. So we have the same. We have here in the curve 0.5 for the D and we need the beta value to be 0.1. So 0.1 is exactly in the middle between 0 and 0.2. We will try to find the intersection between 0.1 for beta and 0.5 for the D value and we try to figure out the curve or the of the sample size. So approximately we will find that the sample size should be increased to 50. So if we increase the sample size from 25 to 50, the beta value will be lowered from 0.3 to 0.1 and we will improve the power of the test from 70% to be 90%.